Hello students, today we are going to discuss about beams of unsymmetrical sections. Till now we have discussed the numericals of bending stresses and we have calculated the resisting moment, bending stress, center of gravity, moment of inertia etc. for the beams of symmetrical sections only like rectangular sections, circular sections, hollow rectangular sections, hollow circular sections. What happens in the rectangular or circular sections? You just know that the center of gravity of rectangular or circular section is exactly at the midpoint. And moment of inertia for the rectangular section is bd cube by 12. While the moment of inertia for the circular section is pi by 64 d raised to 4. But the beams of unsymmetrical sections is not an easy one. Suppose as shown in the figure there is a T section which is unsymmetrical figure. So you have to calculate center of gravity. You have to calculate the distance of top layer from center of gravity as well as bottom layer from center of gravity. Furthermore you have to calculate moment of inertia of part 1 separately, part 2 separately and then after addition of part 1 and part 2 will give you the total moment of inertia as we have discussed in the chapter of CG and MI. So now the chapters of CG and MI are also comes into the picture. So we have to calculate center of gravity first, then after moment of inertia, then after by applying the equation sigma is equal to m by z, we will calculate the bending stress at the top and bottom layer. Or we can find the bending stress at any other layer also. Let us start with a couple of numericals. In the first example 15.1 what is given that it is a T section in which two wooden planks 150 mm cross 50 mm each are connected to form a T section of a beam. So this is the T section in which there are two wooden planks. This is the first wooden plank and this is the second wooden plank. What are the dimensions of the planks 150 mm cross 50 mm means 150 is the width of the T section upper rectangle and 50 is the depth of the rectangle. In the lower rectangle as you can see 50 is the width and 150 is the depth of the rectangle to form a T section as usual. Now if a moment of 6.4 kN meter is applied, so now moment is m 6.4 kN into meter, so 6.4 into 10 raised to 6. Why it is 10 raised to 6? 10 raised to 3 for kN to Newton and 10 raised to 3 for meter to mm. So kN into meter is converted into Newton into mm. Is applied around the horizontal neutral axis means horizontal neutral axis means what? We have to calculate the moment of inertia about horizontal centroidal axis I X X. Remember this. Inducing tension below the neutral axis. So the lower levels or lower layers, lower fibers below the neutral axis are subjected to tension. It is given in the data. Find the bending stress at both the extreme fibers. Both the extreme fibers means top fiber and lower bottom fiber of the cross section means at this fiber and at this fiber we have to calculate the bending stresses. Now these two planks are connected to form a T section. So our first target is to find Y bar. Y bar means what? Center of gravity of the section. Now what is the formula for Y bar? It is A1 Y1 plus A2 Y2 upon A1 plus A2. So now what is A1? A1 means area of the first rectangle this rectangle 150 cross 50. So area is 150 into 50. And what is Y1? Y1 is the distance from the bottom axis. This is the bottom axis which is X axis for us. This is our X axis. So from this axis to the center of gravity of the first part means this is the distance of 150 plus half of this 50 means 25. So total distance will be now 25 plus 150 it is 175 written over here. Similarly for the second part you can see this is the width of the rectangle 50. Let us change the color. This is the rectangle having width 50 and depth 150. So area will be 150 into 50. Now what is the 75? It is y2 the distance from the bottom to the center of gravity of this axis. So this is the total distance 75 divided by a1 plus a2. So A1 means upper area, this bracket, plus A2 means second area, this bracket. So by simplification, you will get this answer is equal to 125 mm. So now we are ready with the Y bar. Remember that 
it is given in the data that the bottom layers, bottom fibers are in tension. So from the center of gravity, suppose the center of gravity somewhere over here, uh, means neutral axis somewhere over here, as we have calculated the y bar. So this distance is known as y bar. Okay, this distance is known as y bar. So y bar is 125 and this y bar is itself known as y t also because it is the tensile, it is the layers subjected to tensile stresses only. So all the bottom layers are subjected to tensile stresses. Therefore, the distance of CG to the bottom fiber is known as y t by the distance of CG to the top most fiber. This distance is known as y c. y c means compressive distance. Distance of CG to the top fiber which is subjected to compressive stress. So must understand the fundamental of this y c and y t. Again repeating from the center of gravity to the bottom fiber this distance is known as y t because it is subjected to tensile stress while the distance of CG to the top fiber is subjected to compressive stress so this distance is known as y c. Now let us what happens ahead. So now here it is y t 20 minus 125 75 m. So 20 minus 125 how this become how this y t. So you just remember that y t is the distance of y bar minus 20 distance between the center of gravity of the section and the upper extreme fiber. So this is 75 and the distance between center of gravity and the section and lower extreme fiber it is 125. So in this case, in this case actually the things are taken reverse. Okay, let us see in the data first. What is given in the data? Inducing tension below the neutral axis. Here it is written that applied around the horizontal neutral axis inducing tension below the neutral axis. So it is quite controversial. So you just uh, cancel out this data as per the calculation. As per the calculation what is given from the CG to the bottom layer it is YC. YC means compressive layers are given at the bottom and YT is given at the top side. So consider this as a YT. So beam is bending like this. So cancel out earlier statements just remember this type of statement it is if it is nothing given in the data then the bottom distance is yc and the above distance is yt let us see what happens now so this is yt means upper is upper layer from the neutral axis this is yc and the bottom layer is yt sorry upper layer is yt and bottom layer is yc 125 now we have to calculate moment of inertia now Remember that what is the formula for moment of inertia? It is equal to exactly the parallel axis theorem. What is parallel axis theorem? I equal to Ig plus A square. So this is Ig, this is A and this is H square. Now how this comes? Remember this, Ig for the rectangle is BD cube by 12. So B is 150 and D is 50. So 150 into 50 cube by 12. It is BD cube by 12. And area is B into D 150 into 50. How the distance will come? So the distance will become 175 minus 125. It is equal to Y1 minus Y bar whole square if you remember. So Y bar we have calculated 125. And what is Y1? Y1 from the bottom is 150 plus 25. So 175. So here it is 175. Y1 minus Y bar. Similarly for the part 2, here it is BD cube by 12, so B is 50 and depth is 150, so BD cube by 12. Area is B into D, 150 into 50 and here it is Y2 minus Y bar or you can say Y bar minus Y bar, bigger value minus smaller value. So Y bar is 125 and Y2 is center of gravity of the second part, means half of 150 that is 75 whole square. So this answer will give you simplification like this. 53.125 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 is the unit of moment of inertia. So here is the moment of inertia calculation. This is quite tough. So just practice in your notebooks. So now how the bending stresses comes? For the upper extreme fiber it is sigma 1 and for the lower extreme fiber it is sigma 2. Formula is same as usual m i by m by i into y. So moment remains same for both the fibers 6.4 into 10 raised to 6 which is already given in the data. What is I? I is also remaining same for both the 
cases 53.185 into 10 raised to 6. Now here for the sigma 1 we will apply yt and for the sigma 2 we will apply yc which we have calculated earlier. It is 125, it is 75. So final answer will be 15.06 Newton per mm square and the here it is 9.04 Newton per mm square which is subjected to compression and which is subjected to tension. So this is the method by which you have to calculate sigma 1 and sigma 2 respectively for the bending stresses. Let us see one more numerical. Here it is the I section given to you. Figure shows a stroll rail beam unsymmetrical I section. Here it is I section upper dimension 100, depth 50, this width is also 50, this depth is 200, this width is also 200 and this depth is 50. So you can imagine the figure. In the maximum, if the bending, maximum bending stress in the beam is not to exceed 40 megapascal, find the moment which will, the beam can resist. So here it is the reverse sum. The bending stress is given to you is 40 megapascal and you have to find the bending moment capital M only. Let us see how. First of all calculate the center of gravity Y bar. It is equal to A1 Y1. So A1 is 100 into 50 you can see. And what is Y1? From the bottom means from this x axis the distance of first cg means 50 plus 200 plus 25 so answer is 275 okay you are getting this second area is 200 cross 50 means the second rectangle 50 cross 200 and the distance is 150 means this 50 plus half of 200 means 100 so answer is 150 third area is 200 cross 50 means 200 cross 50 and the distance is from the bottom to the CG of the first part 25 and the in the division first area A1, second area A2, third area A3 it is repeated as first bracket, second bracket and third bracket respectively. So Y bar is given to you as 125 mm. So Y bar is equal to 125 mm therefore Y1 is equal to 300 minus 125, 175 mm. Y1 means upper distance and Y2 is equal to 125 itself Y bar. Thus we shall take the value of Y bar 175 mm greater of the two values between Y1 and Y2. We also know that moment of inertia of the I section about axis is given by this formula. You can see the moment of inertia now for the first part, for the second part and for the third part. You just calculate as per the previous example it is BD cube by 12 plus area plus Y1 minus Y1. Similarly, BD cube by 12 plus area plus Y2 minus Y1. Similarly, for the third part, it is BD cube by 12 plus area plus Y3 minus Y bar for the second part. Okay. So now, moment of inertia is given to you 255.2 into 10 raised to 6, 7 raised to 4. Just remember carefully that this all the distance you have to calculate at your own without any calculation or without any distances you cannot find the moment of inertia or center of gravity. So center of gravity and moment of inertia these both chapters plays an important role in this chapter also. Now let us calculate the section modulus of this section Z. What is Z I by Y? So I we have calculated 255.2 10 raised to 6. And what is Y our center of gravity? 175 it is, means it is Y bar. So answer will give you 1.46 into 10 raised to 6 mm cube. Now, what we have to find? We have to find moment of resistance, means capital M. Formula for capital M is sigma m to z, as sigma equal to m by z, so m equal to sigma m to z. Now, maximum bending stress is given to you, it is 40, and the z value of z is equal to 1.46 into 10 raised to 6 newton into m. So, answer is 58.4 into 10 raised to 6 newton into mm. You can convert it into kilo into m to meter as 58.4 into 10 raise to 6 will be cancelled out. So answer is answer is in kilo into m to meter. So students, this is the method of unsymmetrical sections. In first example, the T section which is unsymmetrical to X axis, and in this numerical, here it is the I section which is unsymmetrical to X axis. Must remember that this both the sections are symmetrical to Y axis. But we are applying the moment about horizontal neutral axis, so we have to consider the symmetricity about horizontal x axis. So, about horizontal x axis, these two diagrams are not symmetrical, then and then we can start the numerical as per this given method. So, these two numericals are very tough to understand. Just practice these numericals, and we will meet in the next lecture with 
some more numericals and in the next lecture we will complete this chapter also thank you very much students till then practice this two numericals